And Martin has led development teams at Piano Media, a world-leading media paywall solution, and helped the company grow into one of the global leaders in online subscription monetization solutions. During his career, he gained experience, vast experience, to roles such as in-house developer, chief architect, systems integration director, or independent consultant in companies such as Ringier, Axel Springer, or RSD. Currently, he's responsible for management of a team of top-notch software, de software developers and scaling of a big data infrastructure. Martin will tell us why he thinks Scrum sucks. So, hello, everybody. Um, I'm happy to be... Can you hear me now? Yeah, fine. So uh, I'm happy to be here, and I'm going to tell you some of my uh, experiences and what we did in Exponia. And um, by the way, thank you for the intro. Uh, the topic is maybe a bit controversial for some of you, uh, because I stated right away that Scrum sucks. Uh, the I'm going to explain what it has to bring uh, if you use it. Uh, why I think that it doesn't work properly at some cases, and eventually what we did uh, in, in Exponia. Okay, so, oppa. Okay, so what it brings? It really helps uh, shift away from the standard processes that were used widely. Uh, it was even waterfall or the Big Bang uh, system of development. Uh, these two uh, processes were so bad at some point that uh, through, through a lot of years you had so many projects uh, fail. For some of the software development or some, some, uh, some companies, it is good to use waterfall if you, if you have to uh, sh develop something and deliver it at once and uh, this is for example for development of infrastructure uh, on the uh, internet cables for example that are uh, under ocean but eventually for any startup I can't imagine that you would use something like that uh, the standard development life cycle well I have a typo there uh, what we, what we are using now, uh, it's eventually we are shipping, the, shipping to production any time that we want. The, this gives us a lot of flexibility uh, on fixing things, bringing new features, and also reflecting what our clients' needs are. And if they think that we bro broke some flows for them, we can f fix it next day. On the contrary, uh, what I think is that some of the downsides of Scrum are that they, they have a tendency to lose a lot of time on meetings. And if you use it properly by the definition, how it's written as a framework, uh, you lose so much time that you would eventually spend on actually developing and shipping new features. The other side that is really important is that it brings uh, tension between the development team and the product team. You have the roles defined there, that you have a Scrum Master, you have a product owner, and you have the development team. And then you can have some stakeholders, etc. but I'm not going to touch that one. The problem that I see and, and, and what I what I encountered in my previous jobs also is <clears throat> that most of the time the problem is raised when you are doing prioritization, when you are doing breakdowns, and when you do estimations. Uh, because usually the product is pushing you forward much faster than you can, you can cope with, and it creates the tension because they need to understand about the estimations, about the breakdowns, etc. So, 
you have a lot of adaptation of Scrum. Uh, you have many names from them. Uh, you have like Scrum Bang, uh, and there is one that I really love, it's Scrum Butt, that you just pick some things uh, from Scrum. Uh, but yeah, that's the but. Because you've picked some stuff from that, you can't even say that you are using Scrum. You should not be saying that because for a lot of people, Scrum is just like stand-ups, then you have the breakdowns, then you have meetings, then you have retrospective meeting, you have a product owner, you need a Scrum master, then you have a process on this and on that. So if you just pick some stuff from that, don't say that you are using Scrum because it's not, not true and it can deceive people when you are trying to, for example, hire somebody. The really good thing is, as I mentioned already, you have the personas defined, well-defined. And this is one important part on managing any software development. You have defined the people that are working together to get the product, the product or the features ready. You have the Scrum Master, there's one person that actually protects the team. Uh, you have the product owner that defines the, that defines the things, and you have the team of developers itself. The problem that it doesn't cope in Scrum is what should be the skills of those people? They, they say that the Scrum Master should be a really organized person, but it's really hard to find those people. You can't, you, if you just push somebody to the job, you will not, uh, not get the things as efficient uh, as you can. The person maybe will hate the job because, yeah, being a Scrum Master and you have to cope with all those tasks in Jira, oh, I can't imagine doing that. Uh, I have a question. How many of you have any certification of Scrum? Ah, great. <laughs> that's, that's good. Uh, so, when I came to Exponia, uh, the expectation of, of Jozo Kovac and Peter Irikowski, those two founders and CEO, uh, their expectation was that I will bring a lot of transparency, bring Scrum there, and, uh, and just uh, like put processes on it and everything. But I tried and I felt the first meeting that we had. The first planning meeting took us three hours, and we thought that we had the task well-defined, and we were doing estimation, and it took us three hours, and the output of that was crap. Okay, we had some estimation that failed because we didn't do it on time, uh, and, and, it, and it was really, really, really bad. We were trying to do stand-ups uh, for some time because we had a lot of incoming new people. Uh, at that point, we were four. Now we have 20 developers. The whole IT team is of 20 people right now. Uh, what I found out is that the stand-ups help to get some transparency between the people, but we changed that, and we are no, no more doing stand-ups. And one of the aspects was that if you have 10 developers, uh, for one week you lose 12 hours of time, of productive time that, that they should be uh, developing new things and features. So what we do if we don't use Scrum? Well, we do task breakdowns because this is a design phase of any software development. You always should think when you are trying to do something about how to break it to smaller pieces, uh, what is going to be the business output of it, and that's the one big value that we are trying to get out of all of our developers. They always have to think about the business value, because otherwise, if you don't know why you're doing it, you're going to just hate it, and that's not the point. Tasks breakdowns also help you to to, to really understand the problem. Uh, maybe you, you will find different solution. And it gives you the flexibility to give feedback to the product uh, managers that they might not see some details that lies uh, within the software itself. 
And, and this, is, this is really important. You, in Exponia, we give tasks to people, but they are not well defined. That's the whole point. We just give, for example, a design. We have some small description of the functionality, and that person who is, re who is gonna uh, develop it has to get all the details. So he is responsible for talking to the product manager. He is responsible to talking to other stakeholders and to get as much inputs and potential changes for the future. If he knows what the business value of the task is, then he really delivers the value and, and he's really satisfied. So with this approach, you get a lot of happy faces on the development team. So I'm gonna talk a bit about talent versus skill now. So can anybody tell me what's your opinion, what is talent? No, no one, okay. So, so talent versus skill. You can, you can get some skills through time. Talent is something that helps you to get those skills maybe faster. So if I, if I, if I pinpoint it on the, on the, on the sports, uh, if you are talented for playing football, that means that the, you, the skills you're gonna get much faster than somebody else. But if you are not talented for tennis, playing tennis, and you try to uh, learn how to play tennis, it's gonna take you much longer. And this is not just about uh, programming language or uh, about uh, the job that you do, maybe developers, maybe testers, uh, etc. But this is uh, going even further. Further means that you are talented to, to do some stuff uh, in the company and ask questions that will uh, eventually lead you to better results. For that, we also try by the talent to, to put together a team uh, in that way that it works together. So we are not just hiring people because they have a Python skill or something, uh, for example, C++ or Angular, but we are trying to assemble a team that will have the best flow and will be able to, to deliver the, the results faster. And if you don't put too much processes on them, then they will deliver it themselves because they are motivated, they like the job that you are, they are doing. Every single person uh, has, has a time when he, f when he feels like when he's doing something, he is really empowered with it or he thinks that it is draining his energy. So for example, for me, uh, going through Jira tasks uh, and assembling them and, and, and doing all the management like a real scrum uh, is really painful. I don't like it, uh, I'm just drained out of energy and after all, I don't have energy to doing much more productive stuff. On the other side, where I'm really happy and I, when I'm in flow, it's when uh, I, I solve problems and I deliver them on some time and talk to people and when I see some problems between people and I try to solve them. This is something that I feel really empowered with in, in that problem and, and in, I'm in flow. So I, it in, empowers me and gives me a lot of energy. Uh, the one thing that helped, uh, helped us a lot. It's, it's called Talent Dynamics. And it is a framework for talking about uh, people, uh, defining some groups where they fit, and, and, uh, and defining their, their personalities. Why is it so good? Because it empowers you to, to have the flow uh, going within the company, to, a lot, to do a lot of stuff uh, around it. So you have you potentially have some tensions between people in teams, but that not that might not be because they don't like each other. The problem lies because they are interested in different stuff. 
So what you see on this picture uh, is actually logo and, and a definition of, of, of groups of people. So you know, each of the colors uh, says what you are really interested in. So for example, on top, you have the question what, and people that are there by the definition, they always ask what do sh they should do, what, what is the result, what's going to be the value. Then you have people that are interested in who. That is, their support for them is the most, the persons are the most important, uh, important aspect of delivering anything. Then you have when, and that's for example me. I'm always asking, okay, when we gonna do that, or what's the order, how we can prioritize it differently to get more value out of it, et cetera, et cetera. And then you have a group of people that always ask how. And if you take it in contrary, so if I meet with a person that, that is saying always what we should do, what we should do, and etc., and I'm a person that asks, okay, when, how we gonna organize it, and I go into details. And this is, this is something that you should be thinking of, because if somebody is uh, a person that, that really is, as it's described here, he is a creator. This should be all the product managers that they create new things and uh, new ideas and, and everything. But they are not good at organize, organizing stuff. They are really bad at it and they, it takes away their energy. And then you have different groups. And, and if you take this into perspective of how you combine those people, then you don't need a process at all. And this is something that you're never going to get out of Scrum. Scrum just gives you a process and puts people into, into a, like a machinery, like a train. OK, we're heading that way. But it doesn't help you to understand what are the priorities of the people. And if you think about it this way, and, and you take the developers at first, and you assemble the team in such a way that they cooperate really well, and you empower them, and you give them the possibility to, to, to uh, have the uh, have the ownership of each of their tasks. They're gonna be much more productive. They're gonna be really really happy in the uh, in the work that they are doing. If you take it out of them, then you have just coding monkeys, and and it's like okay, I get a I get a task uh, that I should do this week, and then at the end of the week I'm gonna have the retrospective meeting and I'm gonna say yes, this should th this went well, this went not well. I'm not saying that Scrum is really that bad. It helps a lot of people uh, in, in the big companies. For example, uh, last year, here was Pet Petra was talking from Google. She was talking about how they are organized. And they, they also pinpointed only some stuff out of it. And they are developing it their way. But really, in Exponia, what we did, we just put it away. If we need a process for something, well, then the team defines the process. There is no person in the, in the management that defines the, pro, the, the process for the development. We only help the peop, to, to those people to fix some problems that we see. Uh, to have a better understanding, for example, we had a lot of troubles about doing um, quality assurance because we don't have testers team. Uh, we have one tester. And the problem was that tasks were always stuck somewhere. And we were not delivering because we didn't test them properly. And, and what we did, uh, in contrary, was that, OK, so we asked the team how they're going to fix it. And they talked to each other, and they created a better way how to uh, do the, co the quality assurance. And, and it was really helpful because they feel empowered, they, 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 they're doing the job, they, they are creating the process as they need, and, and also all the tasks and, and everything around. If, from, from my previous experiences, uh, where Scrum was really helpful was when we were doing some remote work for an uh, American company, and, and we had those shifts in time zones uh, and and really it it helped there because you had the the listing you had the meetings and everything 
But really, if you are close and you work together, uh, working with the team and empowering them, it's, it's something that is going to reflect on every task. Why are people in Exponia so motivated? Well, we hacked it a bit differently also. Uh, we are giving shares in the company. So everybody is, is not, it's benefit, but you actually, uh, y y you see it in money, right? <laughs> At the end of the day. So you are trying to be as productive as, as it gets. What you, what you don't see, what you don't see uh, underneath of that is that uh, a lot of companies can't do that. Uh, but that's okay, I'm perfectly fine. I understand that T-Mobile is not gonna give shares to anybody. Uh, but for example, they are shifting to, to some agiles uh, and, and from the previous waterfalls, etc. What I don't see there is the empowerment of the people. They are just like working uh, each week through each week and, and uh, through the tasks that they have. The problem is that really, um, sorry, I lost, I lost the thought. <laughs> okay, uh, back to the talent dynamics. As you see, there is eight personalities described, but you are not just one of them. You always are free. That means that if I'm a trader, then I have something from my accumulator and deal maker. And this is something that really describes how you're gonna act in some situations and potentially who you're gonna have conflict with. So in my position and with Jozef Kovac as a product manager and co-founder in the company, he is a creator and I'm the trader. And we had some hard times to collaborate uh, because he just was flying by with a lot of thoughts. And I was like always thinking in the details and seeing where is the potential risk, what's gonna not work, etc. And until the point that we realized that this is the key thing, that he is always asking what, and I'm always asking when, that if we understand this thing, we can talk to each other much better, we are much productive, and we know what are the strengths uh, and the flow just, the, the task just flows, you know. And that's, that, that's the biggest thing that you can, you can have out of it. So if you, if you look at this picture, uh, it's all the small pieces that they combine together. And this is why I think that Scrum sucks at Exponia, because we don't want to do that. We don't, we don't want to be such company. We want to empower people. We want to give them the, the potential of creating things, the responsibilities, the ownership, and, and to, to have the understanding of the business value that they have. And this is like the most important part that, that changes the thinking of myself in, the posi in my position of head of technology, that I don't want such too many processes, I don't want Scrum there. I want processes for things that we need to do. That means uh, release cycles, that means release nodes, uh, when we're gonna shift something, uh, and stuff like this. But not Scrum, all those meetings, pointless, etc. One thing that we adapted, and that's the task breakdown from it, but we changed it. Like, we create small teams that work together to, together, break things into smaller pieces and help each other to understand uh, how they're gonna develop it and what it's gonna bring at the end. So thank you very much. Uh, now there, are, there is a possibility to ask any question or you can find me at our stand. Uh, I'm gonna be there. So there's a ton of questions that you received. Uh, the one with the most upvotes. How do you do estimation and planning without well-defined stories? That's easy. We don't. Uh, <laughs> the, the point is that if you, 
how we do planning, okay. So we work in a week, well, I'm gonna adapt some uh, pieces from, uh, some scr from Scrum, okay. So we do uh, weekly sprints. Uh, we tend to uh, deploy on every Tuesday, but then hotfix is on Wednesday and Thursday and Friday at five o'clock. Uh, what we do at the estimations, uh, we just pull it off the head, okay? We don't need exact numbers. We just say, okay, it's gonna be a day or it's gonna be a week of work. Uh, okay, so to have an understanding when we can ship it and when we can announce it to, to our customers. We don't do exact estimations. Uh, about the planning. Uh, well, we are proud for every feature that we don't deliver. That's gonna be said from, from, uh, from, as Joshua said it. The the point is that we have prioritizations based on feedback of, from our clients and from ideas that we have. But the feedback from clients comes first. So always, uh, the, they are the stakeholders, and we listen to them, and we developed based on those priorities. Next one. Planning took you three hours and you had tasks well defined. How long does it take a developer to get enough info about tasks? Isn't this a waste of time as well? Uh, well, so. I'm gonna skip to the second part, okay? That uh, if it's, uh, if it's Time, time well spent. How many times did you encounter tasks that you had really well defined that you didn't have an, uh, a question to that task? I, I always had a question. So there is no such thing, I think, that well defined task, maybe changing the color of a button or something like that. The, 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 it is really about they understand what they're gonna do and and what is the potential changes in the future. Uh, so if you have a task, there is not always defined what's gonna go next or a wider picture. And if they understand, for example, that uh, these tasks leads uh, towards achieving a be bigger goal in, in the product itself, it's gonna be much easier for them to 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 do well the design phase of the software. So I don't think that is a waste of time. If they understand it really well, then they, they have the best potential to creating it even better or giving the feedback or having uh, uh, changes in the story or to the, the task itself. Regarding task breakdown, don't you think that if a task is not well-defined, a uh, product manager or product owner and, or, and similar will be flooded with requests and questions? So, um, in our situation, we have a, we have a consultant team uh, that helps uh, our customers to use the tool and, and they are actually um, also being persons responsible for their projects. So a lot of time they are eventually the stakeholders, not only the product manager uh, or the product owner. That means that if if the task come, comes from this part, product manager usually just says uh, whether and when to put it, or if he had similar request more time, uh, then he starts defining the ta the task uh, in a in a wider wider scope. Okay, if he can solve. Uh, problems for four clients uh, with one task, that's great. Questions, whether they, they flood them or not. Uh, well, if you, sh if you try to ship every week, uh, there is always a lot of communication going through uh, between development and product managers. And if they're gonna be flooded, well, he's doing a great job still now, so I don't think so. Maybe, maybe if we have more developers, maybe if we put it into 50 or something like that, uh, then maybe we will have some problems with it. Uh, but I think that it's a, it's a good problem at that point. 
Uh, how about uh, your favorite tools for project or task management? Do you have any opinion about JetBrains U-Track or Git GitLab revamped Trello-like issue management? So the question about tools. Okay, so we are using uh, Jira for, for task management. Um, we are using GitLab uh, for um, CI. Uh, the problems with such some of those tools are that they are strongly on the side of the development or on the other con on the, on the contrary, they are uh, on the side of products. And what we found in Jira that you can customize it so much that it just suits any needs that you want. You can have many views for that um, from side of product or or um, development. Uh, what I did use uh, in previous companies was uh, Bugzilla and Fogbugs. Uh, and I really loved Fogbugs because it really helps you from the from the perspective of simplifying uh, definitions of done and and uh, and all the preview uh, view of the task and everything. But Jira really gave gave us the flexibility uh, that we needed. For example, what we we really do also releases through that. Uh, so we plan to have we didn't uh, yet put it into uh, in, in production. But we want to have uh, all the information, whether the feature is released uh, to each of our instances, because uh, we have many instances and some of the clients have also private instances. So we are trying to manage also environments from that. And this really gives us the flexibility that we needed. OK, let's, let's do one more question. There's, there's plenty more. Um, can you summarize meetings uh, you have today with your developers, testers, product managers, or, or analysts? Uh, meetings, so to that. Um, we have a wide company meeting on every Monday, 10.30. That means we bring everybody within the company together, whether they are online or not. Uh, what, sorry, whether they are in Bratislava or not. So they connect online. Uh, and this is really important meeting because for all the departments that we have, uh, we put all the information, all the most important information for the other departments. Each department is using different tools, so you don't want to go to any of those uh, sales uh, tools or something like that, but you get enough information. So this is one that also developers have. Uh, then what we have, uh, well, Meetings before releases, uh, if we if we think that all the things should be released or not, but that's really operative. And besides of that, well, whenever somebody needs him, so we don't have uh, really strict planned meetings for things. So basically, whenever we f we think that we should talk. Uh, and Slack is not helping us anymore, then we meet and talk about some problems, but not something on a regular basis, other than the comp white company meeting. Thank you so much. And uh, the big takeaway for me was to to learn uh, the good things that the, and to pick the good things and, and basically find a system that works for the right context. I might is want there to anything ask, else you would like to add? Yeah, I, uh, I want to answer the, the question that is following. Please go ahead. Uh, Yes, it is a problem of Scrum that it can be used this way because, for example, if you have uh, if you have uh, too long sprints or you have tasks that tends to take a long, really long time, uh, then you end up basically with a waterfall and getting feedback for that is really something uh, that you don't want. It's not going to help you only that you define a weekly sprint and you try to release every every week. If you define three week sprints, that doesn't matter because if you don't deliver a value at the end, it's not going to count. So if you have a task that is taking you to develop one month, then you have something wrong because at the end of the month you you can have something completely different that you wanted. Okay. Thank you very much, Martin. Thank you.